What's up guys, it's Rainad back with another update for The Bazaar. So today I'm going to be talking about my philosophy on RNG in video games. Uh, a lot of you guys think this would be a very long video, one that I have a lot to say on, but the truth is, um, I'm going to keep it pretty short and sweet for you. I think there's a right and a wrong way to do it, and I want to explain why. I complain about RNG a lot over the years on stream, so a lot of you guys might expect a pretty long video on the subject, um, but to be honest, I have a pretty short and sweet philosophy on it, and I want to tell you guys what it is and kind of how I got there. So, um, you know, over the years, uh, I've seen RNG implemented in lots of different games for lots of different reasons, and it pretty much always boils down to making the game more replayable. If you play through a game and you already know everything that's going to happen because you've played through it before, um, it's not that exciting. So randomness is something that helps make a game more replayable and it helps, you know, let unexpected things happen and uh, just creates cool unexpected events, making the game more fun. A lot of times when people, uh, especially in the card game community, talk about RNG, uh, they always talk about it like it's some fungible resource that you can have more or less of. Like you can have more RNG or less RNG or this game is more RNG than that other one. Um, but I never really looked at it that way. Uh, I thought RNG was just kind of one tool that game designers could use to make their game better, and just like pretty much anything in life, there's a good and a shitty way of doing it. So, um, without uh, ranting about it too much, I'll just kind of boil down to what our RNG philosophy is and why we got there. So, uh, it pretty much boils down to two rules. Uh, and the first rule is the random event has to happen before the player is given agency. So, um, let's say there was a traditional card game, right? And you had a spell, and the spell did a random amount of damage, like three to six, for example. So, this is an example of doing RNG the wrong way. It is an RNG card, because it does a random amount of damage, but the moment that the player gets agency is when they target that spell. So I, as the player, make my choice of what the spell is going to shoot at. Then the die roll happens to decide how much damage I do. So the agency happened before the random event. And this is bad because it punishes the player for making the right decision very often. And that's just one of the most frustrating feelings you can experience. There's absolutely no reason to have that specific implementation of RNG. This just makes your game objectively worse. Uh, so. Our first rule is the agency has to happen after the random event. So what's an example of good RNG? Well, just the drawing cards mechanic in card games is a really good way of doing it. I, dr I get random options each time I draw a hand or draw cards, but I make the choices of what cards to use after the randomness has happened. So the randomness is just me getting random cards. Um, but then I make my choices after that random events happen. And then, you know, this way the RNG makes the game play differently every time. It does what it's there to do, but it doesn't have any of those frustrating moments where you're punishing the player for making bad decisions. Um, it's like, okay, oh, I have a bad hand, but now I'm going to play with my bad hand. Or, oh, I have a good hand, I'm going to play with my good hand. It's, um, a lot of games have this kind of... Um, element, and we just think it's a strictly better way of doing it. Another example is like Liar's Dice, if you guys are familiar. Uh, Liar's Dice is a game where you have five dice and a cup, and everybody shakes them up, rolls their dice, looks at them, and then they go around trying to guess, you know, how many fives or how many sixes, how many of any number there is. Um, so in this game, you roll the dice, the random event happens, then you make bets on how many total dice there are among all the cups and you only know about your own cups. So basically, this is better because the players are making their choice, they're making their decision, their input, which is the betting part of the game, uh, after the random event. And again, this just avoids players getting punished for doing the right thing. A lot of cards don't do this, right? Imagine, uh, imagine a card that did two to four damage and spawned a random amount of units depending on how much damage it did. Again, you target before the die roll happens and it just creates those frustrating moments. So that's rule number one, is just when does the player have agency? Let's make sure it's after the random event. And this kind of brings me to my second rule, which is that all of the outcomes of the random event have to be roughly equal in a vacuum. 
Now, I'm gonna use that example of a normal card game again, where you have a spell that does a random amount of damage. And for a spell that does, you know, three to six damage, it's strictly better to do four damage than three damage, pretty much always. It's strictly better to roll the higher numbers. So the outcomes, three, four, five, six, are definitely not equal in a vacuum. Almost always rolling a six is way better than rolling a three. So this specific card that I keep using as an example in this theoretical card game um, actually violates both rules of our RNG philosophy. The second one being all the outcomes have to be equal. Now, let's say there was a card, maybe a little robot or something, that would drop spare parts uh, if it died, right? This is an example of good RNG, because all the spare parts in this theoretical game would be very roughly equal. That's actually very good design. Now, contextually, some spare parts might be better than the others, depending on the board state or what's going on in the game at the time. And that's great. It's great for context to also make the game play, def play differently every time. But, um, you know, at its heart, that kind of RNG design um, is just one that we like a lot more because uh, you're getting a baseline power level out of your card and you're avoiding those, you know, 5% events where um, some somebody just grossly high rolls and uh, it just makes the game into a non-game for no reason. Um, so it really all it is just about trying to avoid certain very frustrating moments and we think just implementing RNG in this way uh, is free. You could do a game that where every card has a random effect even, but if you implement RNG in this way, um, it's just gonna frustrate players way, way, way less. Um, so that's pretty much what it boils down to. Uh, every implementation you guys are gonna see of RNG in our game uh, is gonna be along those lines. For example, uh, you know, just seeing items like um, show up to you, that's an example of good RNG. Every time I go to a shopkeeper, I'm seeing a different row of items in their store available to me. So it's random, but I'm making the choice of what to buy after I've seen the options. You know, I'm not picking a question mark, get a random small item, and then getting a random small item. I'm picking which item I wanna buy. Um, so yeah, we just really wanna preserve that feeling of player agency, um, especially when it's free to do so. And um, let me know what you guys think about RNG. I hope some of you found this insightful. Uh, I don't think it's like a particularly complicated concept, but that's how we see it. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear more about how you guys feel about RNG. I'm sure you have your own thoughts on it. Uh, you know, what kind really frustrates you more than anything? Um, and what are some ways that you've seen it implemented well? Let me know in the comments. We'll see you guys here on another Friday with another update video for the Bizarre.